Welcome back to Open Line tonight. We're coming up on the half hour. We are talking about Governor Lee's first state of the state address tonight here with News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Thank you once again for being here. We're digging through the details of this uh, proposal, and it is just that. It is a proposal. Right. This will change to some extent. Yeah, and it probably won't be approved in a final form until the legislature gets ready to go home for mm -hmm. this year, and that'll probably be this year. It looks like it may go into uh, May. They've been, they've been trying to get out by April, but really in a year when a new governor comes in, he doesn't give his state of the state in the budget now until it's March, it'll probably take them until at least late April, maybe into May, before they get it done. And in old days, there are times when they usually went into June before they did that, and that made people nervous. One year they actually went past wow. June 30th. That was the year they were debating the income tax. By the way, there has not been a general tax increase in the sales tax in Tennessee since 2002. So we're now going on about eight, about 17 years since that happened. So that's the longest period since we've had a sales tax increase. So, And I hear no one complaining. No, no, no. In <laughs> fact, we've actually had a couple of sales tax decreases yeah. in things on food and some other yep. necessities. There are some moves in the legislature to decrease it further on, on women's products, mm -hmm. women's hygiene products. Uh, in fact, when the governor announced yes. earlier that he wanted to get rid of the uh, gym tax, the gym tax, uh, the record, the, 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 it, so there were some people say, "Well, if you want to do that, let's do it on real necessities right. like female hygiene products." Mm -hmm. That hasn't gone anywhere, but let me just see if it's a little different this time. And, and as you were saying at the top of the show too, we're in a in a in a season where revenue is great. Where he he is proposing to expand the rainy day fund to its highest amount that it's ever been. So. The good news continues, I guess, for the governor. This is kind of, I don't want to say an easy budget to put together. It's a billion dollar budget. Yeah, and lawmakers will come up with their own bill of the things they want to add in there for, sure. their, for their pet projects to some yes. degree, and the, we'll see how they do with that. When the, when the governor has a lot of money, and the state has mm -hmm. a lot of money, there's a feeling by the legislature they want to go ahead and get some of that money for themselves, yes. for their districts. And the administration also wants to do what they can uh -huh. to kind of keep it like this. And so that's always a push pull, and we'll see how that works. But we won't know how that works out till they're getting ready to move the budget. And we'll start figuring that out when the committee starts shutting down. And, and there's a the whole list that came out from the speaker's offices a couple of weeks ago that they're already starting to talk about this is our this is our schedule to get out of here. And they'll mm. start closing they'll start closing uh, committees sometime in April. I know you have your ear to the ground always up on the hill. And what's been the general consensus about how setting up this administration has gone? I think on the on on the whole, people are, are pretty happy with it. There there was some there was some uh, unhappiness uh, from the Tennessee Star group, the uh, the conservative. They have their outlet. Uh, it looks like a, a media outlet, a, a newspaper. I'm not exactly sure. It's completely journalism, but mm -hmm. they were they do. I think they do reflect feelings in some parts of the Republican Party. They were very unhappy. Thought that Governor Lee was appointing a lot of uh, rhinos, Republicans in name only, mm -hmm. and in some cases even Democrats. They were saying, but. Most people are very happy with the appointments of his senior staff, and, and he kept he kept a good number of, of, of Governor Haslam's appointees. Now that that makes sense in this in this sense that this is the first time a Republican governor has been followed by another Republican, Republican governor. governor. Sure. Over the past 50 years, every time there's been a change in administrations, there, it's gone from Republican to Democrat. Now, we, even there, there was still left over, but we probably had more this time we had before. But that makes sense when you think about where the party affiliations right. are. So, but on the most, I think I think there's been pretty high marks about all of it. And of course, they've been sort of waiting for the governor to sort of give them his leadership position of this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. They're already starting to move bills. They're moving bills about the uh, community, act to the community uh, overview, right. oversight committees, the, the one here yes. in Nashville. They're, they're moving things on the heartbeat bills, some of the other mm -hmm. abortion legislation. So they're starting to move things through committees and we'll start to see things passed. And it'll be interesting to see when a controversial bill passes up there, because this time the governor is setting up a like a website where people can come and, and give them their thoughts about this bill. Not, that's not something that I remember Governor Haslam doing mm -hmm. in terms of reviewing bills when they were on his desk. He has so many days after it passes to make up his right. mind. Let's see how that works. I've never seen that done before. Let's talk about a part of the budget that may be really um, more closely tied to the Republicans and how, and how he approaches it, and that is health care reform and some of his spending there. Yeah, he, he um, during the campaign, uh, the Democrat, Carl Lee, would say, well, we, we really need, Carl Dean, we really need mm -hmm. to expand the Medicaid program, right. the Obamacare. And Bill Lee said, no, that's, a, that's, 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 that's big government, that's a failure, we don't want to do that. We need to instead do things that do things to drive down costs and we need to do things that will make uh, health care more accessible through telemedicine. And he talks about a few things like that. He's put some money in to further extend broadband things, to do some more things for education in terms of the, of the medical schools in the, in the state. Mm -hmm. He's talking about doing things in the area of mental and behavioral health that, that speak to that. He's talking about $11 million more to uh, Mental health help funding. the, the, health, the yeah. health safety net. 
And also one thing that's very interesting, he's putting another million dollars in the state's partnership with the Suicide Prevention Network. And Tennessee's suicide rate is 20% higher than the, uh, than the national average. This thing should give you pause. And going back to criminal justice reform, one thing he said tonight that just my eyes popped out, the, um, the zip code at the bottom of Capitol Hill, and I don't know which direction it goes, but I suspect towards the north part of the county, is the, is the rate with the highest rate of incarceration, incarceration. in the nation? Right. I don't want to find like out. I'd almost believe you if you said Tennessee, and then he said the nation. He said the nation. That, that's, that's an astounding number. I'd be mm -hmm. interested to know what that's all about, where those people are, and how did it get to be that way, and, and what the governor what the governor's gonna do will help to, to address that, because right. that's an astounding number. Let's push pause real quick on our conversation. Let's go to Matt on the line. Matt, thanks for calling in. Are you with me, Matt? Hello. Hi, go ahead. I am. Hi, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering about the oversight board. Are we gonna have a board that oversight the oversight board? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, I, the, the bill that's in the legislature sets up standards. I don't know if there's mm -hmm. going to be an oversight for it, but right. I'll, I'll board to do that. But they're setting up some things. At first, these boards anywhere across the state. And there's also similar boards to the one in Nashville in both Memphis mm -hmm. and Knoxville. And in Knoxville, there is equal opposition to this bill in the legislature. I haven't heard as much out of Memphis about it, but the bill would first say they can't have subpoena power, mm -hmm. which the Nashville board would have, at least under the way the, the charter amendment was passed in Nashville. It also would not allow for some of the diversity in terms of you have to have so many members from disadvantaged, areas. disadvantaged neighborhoods, yeah. or they have this and that and the other. So. Uh, that bill it looks like it's headed towards some pretty quick passage. It's passed out of a couple of committees in the House, seems to be headed towards the House floor. Mm -hmm. The governor says he's for it, and I suspect it'll pass in the Senate as well. So I'm having Governor Bra uh, Mayor, Mayor, Bradley. Mayor Bradley on, mm -hmm. on my show this week. So Who has been up on the Hill. Show. He has. He's been up there on it and had some pushback with yeah. Republican legislators who feel like Nashville's not being supportive enough of his police. Of course, he, he fought back against that. but. Uh, Mayor's having trouble with the FOP yeah. here in town on, on, on this issue and some others, right. pay and things like that. Right. Matt, thanks for calling in. Uh, Taylor, tell me again who was on three. Julie. Okay. Julie, hi. Thank you for being Hello, with us. Julie. Go ahead. Yes. Julie? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. I would go ahead and ask a question. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to know if the governor has any say so over what's going on in the Metro School Board. That's a very good question. Obviously, News Channel 5 Investigates has done a lot of reporting on um, on the school board here in Metro Nashville. I would say it depends on the issue, so I'm not exactly sure which issue she's most concerned about. Uh, in, in most cases, the school board has a lot of autonomy on that, although mm -hmm. the legislature has not been beyond passing bills that uh, nullify laws in Metro that could affect the school board here. But uh, It could create some oversight. Could create some additional oversight or some guidelines or additional or rules oversight. the way they, they're doing it with the oversight board. So that, that's certainly possible although for the most part that's a it local would be a situation. big move right well it would be a big move and, and of course that group out there is is having difficulties agreeing among themselves right, right now I've with. even asked Mayor Briley about it when when he's joined me here saying you know can't you step in and he really tiptoes around and says I have some power but I don't have the ultimate say that's really the school board well that is set up that way I mean mm -hmm. he, he now there was a time in metro government when it first started that the school board was appointed by the mayor. So those who served on the mayor on the board served at his pleasure along with the confirmation right. of the council. That's not there anymore. They're directly elected by the people. They're elected officials just like he is, and they're they're elected by districts. They're not elected mm -hmm. citywide. But that 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 can be an issue. And but it, you know they also are the ones who elect or, or select the school board director, um, not the mayor. Although they they want the mayor to be involved in that process. You might remember back in 2015 when we were electing a mayor. There was a lot of concern about we were, we were in the middle of trying to hire a schools director. They put off doing that until the new mayor was elected. Mm -hmm. So that person turned out to be Megan Berry would be involved in that process. So they're, they're, even in the council, the council approves their budget, but the right. council can't tell them how to spend, spend money. It. And they can right. spend, they say, they here's the amount you get. Money, and they could spend it all on peanut butter. And the council mm -hmm. can't directly do anything about that. Obviously, they, they could complain about that, mm -hmm. and, and that by itself would be a big problem. But there's a lot of autonomy for local school boards. You know, and it is interesting, and this this is setting the state of the state speech aside right now, but it is interesting uh, considering all that, that Phil Williams has uncovered through our News Channel 5 investigations that we are not hearing more from the mayor and the Metro Council who allocate the money that goes to them. Have you, have you been looking at my questions for this week? That's, that's one of the <laughs> questions I'm going to talk to him about. Because at some point, 
somebody has to step up. I mean, this is like the, the ultimate hot potato in our county and nobody, it seems, wants to touch it. Well, I mean, the, the school board has before it a, a, de a decision about whether to extend this contract. And right. that, that may be where the rubber has to meet the road. There are, there are people on the school board who obviously are not happy with the leadership they're getting from Very Dr. Joseph. So. But on the other hand, he has allies. Are there five of them? Are right. there six of them? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have five, you don't have enough votes right. to not renew his contract. It would probably be better if they had six. It would look a little bit more not quite as divided. A 5-4 right. vote would look about as bad as some of the Supreme Court decisions. Everybody's going, well, what, is, what exactly. does that really mean? But I, I still think that's that's going to be the, the big issue going forward. And, you know, the mayor has to be careful. This is controversial. And he's mm -hmm. also running for yes, re-election in August. So he has to be careful about what, he, what battles he picks especially ones that he doesn't have a direct impact on. So sure. I'm going to ask him about it. We'll see what he has to say about I it. I look forward to hearing his answer. <laughs> I'll be tuned in. When's that happening, Pat? <laughs> well, we're going we're gonna to talk with him on Wednesday. We'll be airing okay. it on Friday. Fantastic. If he says something really newsworthy, you might hear we'll about it before. We'll before. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I want to go back to anything that really that we haven't talked about tonight that really stuck out to you in this speech. Well, he made a big push. Uh, about his uh, about this about a set, setting up a governor's office of faith-based and community initiatives. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, this this began earlier, I think, under the Bush administration, and we I, I think the, the Trump administration is mm -hmm. doing as well. So it's not unusual for a Republican to do Explain this. Explain what that is. Well, it's going to be an area where this office will help leverage, and I'm reading from the speech, the nonprofit community to unleash the potential of all Tennesseans to get involved not only to make citizens the lives of citizens here better, but reduce the responsibility and the size of government. Uh, some people don't always see it quite that way, but that, that's what he's trying to do. That, it's a little bit like the mentor program that he mm -hmm. came up tonight with f to help people help these prisoners coming out right. so they, they have somebody to, to lean on and guide as mentors as they go through that process. He said he wants to be the first person to volunteer. He said all his senior staff want to volunteer. He didn't give a call to action during the speech to say go to this website, but right. look for that. I suspect sure. that's coming I'm sure. tomorrow or something else, and that's a, a big push. And we just need to see how the volunteers in Tennessee respond to, respond to that. In that. Yes, and I think this this faith based initiative. I will be interested to see um, the overall support of it and how it plays out over the years to come. Yeah, he had a, he had another one in here that I wanted to talk about. It was it was basically about he wanted to make sure he talked about how he'd seen some recent surveys that indicated that people that, that young people thought that socialism was better than, than mm -hmm. capitalism and he, there were a lot of things that went there that, were, that he found were very troubling and he wanted to try to see what he could do to sort of change that and also to teach civics and he didn't think a he lot did. of people he did he put a lot of emphasis on that he think a lot of people understood the need to, to take care of that and why and that he would recognize schools he, that are really going above and beyond to he, teach he civics he set up a, a, a governor seal program yes. and those who really go beyond and above and beyond to teach civics were going to get recognized mm -hmm. uh, by that it probably won't cost very much but it'll be interesting to see what he sets up and, and how that's going to work and what the schools do to try to get that seal because so, yeah. I think a lot of them will try to get I just I thought that was interesting because uh, it, he, he made a, he made a big push about that at one point it was a couple of his applause lines too and, and I think also that he talked about that on the campaign trail how important that he was did. and you've heard a lot of politicians talk about that I mean it, it I guess this is my age I, I do see a lot of young people that don't know the history of things why mm -hmm. things are the way they are they don't understand how things were founded the way they were and that doesn't mean everything we did in the in founding both of this local government right. and the state government or the federal government was perfect but if you don't understand how you got there you may not know where you are and where you need to go from right there. right very interesting okay we're going to take another quick break when we come back we will have one more long segment we would love to hear more of your questions and comments uh, weigh in on what you thought of the of the governor's speech this was his first state of the state address love to hear from you 615-737-plus